for more now, we're joined by Andrea De Angelis in Florence. He's a political scientist at the European University Institute. Thanks so much for joining us, Andrea. My Take pleasure. us through some of the dynamics at play here. What do Italians actually want, and how dramatically could this vote change Italy and potentially the European Union, in your opinion? So if I understood correctly the question, because the connection is not ideal, but basically if you look at the domestic uh, consequences of this referendum, uh, we have, we, in, a, in a study realized that with my colleagues uh, um, and the European University Institute it shows that it's, uh, it's better understood as a referendum, in a sense. So it's a referendum about the government and about Mr. Uh, Renzi in the first place. And so the direct consequence would be to change these uh, Italian symmet perfectly symmetric uh, bicameral uh, system. But if you look at the indirect consequences, then um, the effects might spread across Europe so because uh, this is clearly going to impact on the future of the government of the country, but also it's going to impact on the um, growing uh, Eurosceptic front in Europe, and this might, might also trigger um, financial instability of the markets and so cause a, a new um, financial turmoil. And you consider those unintended consequences. That's not what voters are actually looking to trigger with their no vote, correct? So in our study, we show that if you look at the voters who report not trusting the government, the share of the yes vote is as low as 10 percent. But among the voters who do trust Renzi and trust the government, the same share grows to 84 percent. So this is really about an evaluation of the present government, even though um, on, the, on the actual contents of, the, of these constitutional amendments, there is a much uh, larger agreement about the voters. But apparently that is not what is at stake. Okay, let me ask you uh, kind of more of a technical question. We're actually hearing that the voter turnout now at noon uh, is only around 20%. So if the total is less than 51%, that actually invalidates this referendum entirely. No. Do you think that could happen or, or no? No, no, no. There, there is no um, minimal threshold for this referendum. I mean, okay. to Ita no, uh, there's no that quota. Okay, fair enough. Uh, let me ask you, though, how, because you've written a lot about this issue as well, how has the campaigning and the media influenced Italians in this vote? Sorry, would you repeat the question? The, the, the audio is not perfect. Sorry, something you've done a lot of research on is how yep. campaigning and the media could influence voters. How do you feel that may have influenced voters in this vote? Sure. Well, you. So here, let's say that the media are divided um, along ideological line. It's really about uh, the media that support the government against those who don't. And uh, the campaign has been a tough campaign. There has been a lot of negative campaigning, particularly on the side of those who oppose the government. And uh, so Italy has gone through a long campaign, and uh, everybody agrees that it's good for the country to have, after this referendum, a sort of reconciliation um, due to, to how tough this campaign was. Now. Mm, I would say that Renzi had a very smart strategy. Uh, we know that there is, there is argument with referendum voting that the status quo is stronger, and Renzi really tried to overcome this status quo bias. And he put it in a, you know, he, he flipped the perspective, saying, would you retain all these senators that are so costly? And so this might have induced in a change, but we really don't know. There is a lot of uncertainty okay. also because Italian polls are publicly available only up to two weeks before the elections. So okay. there might have been a last minute swing, but we are not picking up that. Okay, Andrea De Angelis, thank you so much for joining us with that.